how to configure upstream and downstream jobs in Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.361.1. And also on this controller, I've set up three jobs. Let's take a look at job one. What we'll see here when we take a look at configure is a very simple job that says echo hello world from job one. Now, what we're going to be doing is we want to be able to have job one complete and then run job two. Once job two completes, I want that to fire off job three. But that sounds like we're going to wire these together from one to two to three. But in reality, we're going to wire them up from three to two to one. So let's go take a look at how we're going to do that. So let's go over to job two. Again, we'll take a quick look at the job. It's just hello from job two. That's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to check build after other projects are built. Before we check on this, let's take a look at our help. And what this is, is it sets up a trigger so that when some other projects finish building, a new build is scheduled for this project. So let's collapse our help, check the box. The projects I want to watch, in this case, since this is job two, I want to watch job one. So I'll select job one. Now we have options here. We can trigger only if a build is stable, trigger even if the build is unstable, trigger even if the build fails, or always trigger even if it aborts. But in my case, I only want job two to run if job one is successful. So we'll leave the default setting there. Let's go ahead and click on save. Let's go back over to job one and let's run job one. So we click on build now for job one. That will finish reasonably quick. Here's number one running. We can see it was started by admin. That's who I'm logged in as right now. We have our hello world, but then notice at the end, triggering a new build of job two. Well, let's go take a look at job two. With job two, we can see that it ran. We go into number one. We can see that it was started by upstream project, job one, build number one, which was originally caused by started by user admin. So we can see back up the path of how this job, job two, was actually started via job one completing. Now, let's do the same thing for job three. If we take a look at job three, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and build after, in this case, job two. Now that we have job two, let's click on save and click on build now for job number one. So we click on build now for job one. Job one completes successfully. It triggers a new build of job two, which is number two. If we go over to job two and take a look at the output, we see it was caused by job one, but now this is triggering a new build of job three, number one. Now, if we take a look at job three, with job three, we see an even bigger stack. So job three was started by job two, which was started by job one, which was initially started by user admin. Now, really the last thing that I want to do is go in and make these manual configuration changes in these jobs. What I want to do is have these triggers. And the reason why I say trigger, if we take a look at job three and configure this section, build after other projects is under the build trigger section. So what I want to do is modify my pipelines to include these triggers. So before we do that, let's go ahead and uncheck and save. And let's go back up to job two and configure and uncheck and save. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work our way back up this time all the way from job three to job two, which will then get us into job one. So let's go back to job three and let's click on pipeline syntax. Now with pipeline syntax, we want to go to declarative directive generator. We want to change this to triggers and the trigger that we want to select is upstream. Now with upstream, I want to watch because I'm going to do it for job three first. I'm going to say job two. I select job two. Notice there's always a comma there. That's going to be important. We'll click on generate declarative directive and let's copy this. Let's go back to job three, configure. Let's paste this in right here in this section. We'll space it in just a little bit, not that one. Let's space this one in, that and this. Okay, so we click save and we're going to run this once because if you notice, we just click save, but when we click on configure, this change has not been persisted into the job configuration yet. So let's go ahead and run the job once, which will read the pipeline, make the changes that are in the trigger. We can see that two completed. If we go back into configure, now we can see that this is set up to watch job two. Now let's go ahead and go back into job two. The only change that we're going to need to make in this pipeline is instead of watching for job two, we're going to watch for job one. So we'll change this to job one. Be sure to leave that comma in there. Space this in just to make it a little bit cleaner to read. Click on save. Again, we need to run this once, but when we run this this time, then we would expect when job two completes that job three will run. So we'll click on build now for job two. We'll make sure it completes. We're here at number three. We can see that it ran fine and it triggered a new build of job three. 
Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at job three. We can click right into it there. We can see it's number three right here. It was started by job two and it finishes successfully. So now if we go ahead and go back up to job one and do a build now on job one, what we'll expect to see is job one will complete successfully, which now triggers a job two number four. We can see that four is pending right now. Once it completes, we'll click into it. We can see that this job was triggered by job one. Now it's triggered job three. We'll take a look at job three. And finally, number four for job three was number one, was job one to job two, and finally completes with job three. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.